the Labour Party civil war doesn't seem to be going anytime soon. In fact, it's intensifying. As many as 50 CLPs and four trade unions, one affiliate and 28 MPs have either signed a motion in support of Jeremy Corbyn or a no-confidence vote in Keir Starmer and General Secretary to the party, David Evans. One of the CLPs in Nottingham East has made certain headlines, which allegedly left a Jewish member leaving the meeting. Nadia Whittam, the MP who represents that constituency, put out a statement on Twitter. I am disappointed that a motion that was clearly out of order made its way onto the agenda of the Nottingham East CLP meeting this evening, which I attended. I take the EHRC report into Labour anti-Semitism very seriously, as should all of our members, given the pain caused to Jewish communities and that the report found the Labour Party to have broken the law. I would like to put on record my stated objection to the motion this evening. My objection was, however, overruled by the chair of the meeting. The atmosphere and tone of the meeting that proceeded was wholly unacceptable, leading to a Jewish member of the Labour Party feeling they, feeling they had no choice but to leave the meeting. I have communicated with the member in question and will continue to make sure his well-being is priority, prior, prioritised by the party. I understand that disciplinary uh, proceedings are currently underway against an officer of the CLP. In the spirit of the EHRC report, which requires an independent process, I will be making no further comment on the disciplinary process, sorry, the disciplinary aspect of tonight's events, uh, other than to reiterate the, reiterate the importance and urgency of ensuring all members are comfortable and welcome at CLP and branch meetings, and that the spirit and letter of the EHRC report is respected and fully implemented at every level of the party. Now, first of all, solidarity with the member in question. Nobody should be made to feel... Um, Nobody should uh, be made to feel the need to walk out of the meeting. Obviously, we have no more information on what happened at that meeting, but again, solidarity with that member. What I take issue from Nadia's statement is her opposition to the motion. Why is Nadia, who was a, a left um, socialist camp campaign group MP, rising star, uh, got mainstream attention after being sacked by Keir Starmer for not wanting to legalise torture? Now, why is she supporting the side of the leadership? And why is, she, why is she supporting uh, shutting down of debate? So Nadia is one of the socialist campaign group's MPs who co-signed a letter calling for the leadership to reinstate Corbyn's whip. The motion in her constituency, which she opposes, was for the whip to be reinstated. So it's entirely contradictory. She's supported a motion with left MPs to say, we called on the leadership to reinstate what's Jeremy Corbyn. Her uh, constituency Labour Party put out a motion saying, we support Jeremy Corbyn, reinstate the whip. She puts out a statement saying, I oppose this. I genuinely feel disappointed though. I'm disappointed. She's my local MP. I was a genuine big admirer of her. Now, does that mean we should now cancel her? You know, we should completely disregard her. She is now a far right or she's a Tory light. No, of course not. Um, she's still of the left and more likely she will support left policies. She's still, she is still a part of the S, uh, socialist coming group. What worries me though, is that this is an issue of democracy. It has nothing to do with factions or political leanings. Everyone has the right to express solidarity. I don't think there is an excuse to oppose a motion. Now, of course you can say, solidarity to the member in question, the Jewish member who felt the need to leave. Completely understand that, as you should. But then also go on to say, whilst obviously um, the local meeting may have got a bit heated, I, I don't know anything about the meeting, whilst it led to a member walking out, I still support democracy, I still support people's voices being heard. She can go on Twitter Right, and say what she wants. She has Twitter as a platform. She has TV cameras as a platform. She's an MP. She's going to have people interested in her. Journalists are going to write articles about her. But individual members, what platform do they have? Nobody knows who they are. They don't have many followers on Twitter. Some do, some don't. So expressing solidarity through motions in your local Labour Party is a way to um, have your voice heard. So why can the leadership or certain uh, politicians, MPs, have their right to free speech on these big platforms, but other members who are powerless don't. Now, Louise Reagan, she is the chair of Nottingham East CLP. She was suspended recently, I must note, 
Now, some people are saying it's because um, the Jewish member that we talked about earlier walked out of the meeting. But here's a direct quote from the Metro and it states, Louise Reagan's suspension is linked to a decision to break party rules by pressing ahead with the motion calling for the party whip to be restored to Jeremy Corbyn. So we have to assume that's the reason, not because of a member walking out. Again, we don't have much information about this meeting. The facts we have now is uh, Louise Reagan, the chair of the CLP, was suspended because her democratic right to show a solidarity to a former leader who's had his whip removed unlawfully. Now, I, for one, believe that Nadia should have stood up for her on the basis of her democratic right to pass motions of solidarity. This is truly messy stuff. We have seen a lot from the side of CLPs and members in solidarity to Jeremy Corbyn. But what have we seen from the leadership? Well, thankfully, Chris Saltmarsh has shared an email he received from David Evans. Um, Chris, oh, Chris, sorry. Chris Saltmarsh was co-founder of Labour Green New Deal and is chair of Oxford Labour. So this is the email he received. Dear Chris, Following the publication of the EHRC report into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party on the 29th of October, I provided some guidance to CLPs on what we were and were not appropriate topics of discussion, or what were, excuse me, um, of topics of discussion for branches and CLPs. The situation has clearly moved on since then, so I wanted to provide you with some updated guidance. It remains the case that motions which seek to repudiate the findings of the EHRC or question its competency to conduct the investigation remain not competent business for branches or CLPs. Motions relating to ongoing disciplinary process or cases are also not in order, in line with the instructions of my predecessor. I'm assuming he is talking about Jenny Formley. I'm aware that other motions, including expressions of solidarity and matters referring to internal processes of the PLP. Uh, are providing the flashpoint for the expression of views that undermine the Labour Party's ability to provide a safe space and welcoming space for all members, in particular our Jewish members. Therefore, all motions which touch on these issues will be ruled out of order. A number of CLPs have asked for further information on the basis of which myself and the NEC are able to rule on what can and cannot be discussed by local parties, and I'm very happy to provide that explanation. He goes on to say, the Labour Party's Code of Conduct, Anti-Semitism and All Forms of Racism rightly states that the Labour Party will ensure the party is a welcoming home to members of all communities, with no place for any prejudice or discrimination based on race, ethnicity or religion. The NEC has, NEC has the power to uphold the rules and standing orders of the Labour Party and to take any action it deems necessary for such purposes. The rule book is also clear that such powers can be delegated to, amongst others, the General Secretary. For the avoidance of doubt, my previous rulings on these matters are all being properly re uh, reported to the NEC, which is supportive of my approach. The Labour Party is committed to implementing the EHR re EHRC report in full, and part of this is to accept our previous failure to deal with anti-Semitism and adopt a genuinely zero-tolerance approach which will ensure all members, and in particular our Jewish members, feel safe and welcome. Within the Labour Party, please excuse me, within the Labour Party. Please rest assured that when I took up post as General Secretary, I have no desire at all to hamper discussion by our local parties. But until we can improve our culture, such restrictions may be required to stay in place. Best wishes, David Evans. So the excuse David is using here, using here is one of competence. Um, he then gives a brief excerpt from the EHRC, which ironically he doesn't follow. Now this is important. This would make much more sense if members were showing solidarity in favour of people who are found to be anti-Semitic. Um, if, say, the support was for Ken Livingston, I then agree that supporting someone like this is unacceptable. I would it would generally create a hostile environment uh, for Jewish people when thousands of members are showing support for a disgraced ex-member. The problem is... They're expressing solidarity in favour of someone who hasn't been suspended or expelled for anti-Semitism. That's why there is a huge backlash from this. Uh, members feel there's been an injustice, that Corbyn doesn't deserve this treatment, which I agree with. Most members are anti-racist. If Corbyn had generally been anti-Semitic, 
then I don't think we'll be seeing what we see today. Sure, some people on Twitter might cry foul, but certainly not local parties or affiliations or MPs. Please subscribe to my channel, like and share it because now more than ever, we need independent voices.